Hi, I'm Pat McGrew with McGrew Group, and I'm here with my colleague, Brian McBee from Pixel Doc Consulting. We are bringing you another video case study. Um, this time we're with the RevSpring team, and we have the charming Eric Hollingsworth, and we have the amazing Carrie Sublet, and the, the pair of them have been on what I call a major adventure in trying to optimize their overall workflow and they have been using a lot of the Solomar tools to do it. So we thought today we would dive into one of those adventures and that especially around your medical digitization adventure um, to talk about how you've been working with EMR systems and uh, the things that you've had to do and the advantages you've been able to discover. So Ryan, where do we wanna start this discussion? You know, we could go a lot of different ways, but I think we'll start with uh, maybe Carrie, if you could tell us what an EMR act system actually is and, and why you've seen such a change over probably the past 10 years, kicked off probably by legislation, uh, that they're just everywhere, it seems like, these days for you. Sure. So uh, electronic medical record is what EMR stands for. And it's, you know, essentially the, the way of the future, right, is that your information when you go to the doctor is um, in a cloud, in a secure cloud, where anyone within an organization can see your records, see your history, see what prescriptions you may have. And, you know, with more online bill payment availability and being able to pay you know, through other measures other than just writing a check and sticking it in the mail, you know, it's been become very important that the statement or the collection of any balances um, is happening both in a print and in a digital sense. So, uh, you know, most of those files are, you know, really meant for online presentment. So, so these systems, not... I want to, these systems are not new. So, uh, the electronic medical record systems, medical record systems have been around for a while, but they've all gone through a lot of changes in order to meet the new legislation. That means you're getting some unusual things thrown in your direction from file format perspectives and printability perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, all the time people are looking for new and efficient ways to submit maybe a claim to a um, healthcare, you know, payer, like an insurance company. Um, and, you know, it used to take months and months and months to go through that process, right? Because you might have a stack of pages that need to be mailed and sent and then scanned in and then processed for that payment to come through and show up um, on your account with whatever your provider was. And now, you know, we're trying to find efficiencies and we've got digital ways to submit those claims to those same payers, but through, you know, a, an electronic manner, right? So whether it's um, storing your healthcare information or sending that information about your visit to a payer so that they will pay on the claim um, and all that documentation that has to go with the claim. And then again, on the back end, any balance due, if there's, um, you know, maybe you need a um, just a quick summary of what's due, or maybe you really want to know what insurance paid and didn't paid, so you need a more detailed bill. So a, a lot of these functions are now being done uh, through electronic means, PDF means, and sometimes they're just a digital presentment within a secure uh, portal that the patient can access at any time and see kind of a snapshot of their account. So I'm curious, Gary, with the all it sounds like that it's digital presentment almost first in terms of how these systems think. So when it comes to being able to print these things uh, on the back end, what kind of interesting things have you found in the files themselves where you had to say, wait, we need a tool to kind of fix a lot of this because it, it's not uh, it's not processing through our workflow. It's not uh, making it right. efficient when we go to print, right? Yeah, so, you know, being a digital presentment um, file, you know, basically an image that is just going to display, you know, there's no need for exact fonts, there's no need for um, spot color, there's no need for, you know, all of the finer things that we have developed in the print side of the world. And so um, getting that file that it is really a very small optimized file for storage purposes, um, you know, 
it's just missing a lot of the information that you actually need at the printer level to make it print the way you see it on your screen. Very good. So Eric, what was the solution? I mean, Carrie's sitting here with a, a bucket of stuff and she's got tight SLAs. Uh, the team has got to take the stuff in and get it back out. What was the solution? My solution is Carrie. Carrie is my solution to all the problems. Um, <laughs> You yeah, know, but you I, can't I would, clone her yet. I mean, that's the problem, right? Uh, you can have really great people, but you got to give them great tools too. <laughs> I don't want to clone her. I'm going to keep her all to myself. She's not available for anybody else. <laughs> um, you know, the the tools are always they're they're the good and the bad, right? I mean, they are. Um, you know, you always look for the tool and like the the one thing that's going to be your Swiss Army knife to to fix all of your problems. And, you know, we struggled with that for a long time. And so we, we actually tried a lot of different things, right? And, you know, early on in this process, the solution is, well, we're going to go back to the customer and we're going to say, hey, Mr. Customer, you've got to fix your file because when it hits my printer, it aborts and I can't print it. it sometimes that's successful. More often than not, the customer's like, I, I, don't, I don't know what... What do you want me to do, right? Like this is what this is the output I'm given from this massively expensive piece of software that I purchased, and I have no control, right? So um, then you're forced to kind of pivot internally and say, how can we fix the problem? And we started one-off solutions at the customer level, right? So we would take this one customer that has this one problem with this one file and try to fix it, and then we would try to automate it. And then we moved forward from that and we said, hey, this is, the, this is a broader problem than just this one customer, right? We're seeing this kind of repeat itself within this environment, within this software system upstream um, that these health plans have purchased. And so we need a broader solution within RevSpring to tackle all of those. So anytime a customer that has this piece of software in their environment comes to us, we know that we have a fix for it. So that's really where, um, you know, we, right around the same time we were looking for that, Solomar introduced the Ready PDF tool. Um, Carrie started, you know, she, she dove right in and she started messing around with it. And there's a, you know, there's a ton of configuration, a ton of options. And um, we eventually landed on a place where we feel like we have a configuration that, that solves the majority of those problems in an automated way. So um it was it was a journey for sure right it took us there was a lot of iterations to the solution um but ready pdf is what we lean on i would say 99 percent of the time today for our our pdf files that have processing issues and eric you know when we had spoken in the past it, it sounded like it, it also not only did it fix kind of the technical bits um so that you could you know, streamline production and also meet your SLAs, but it also kind of secondarily gave you even more confidence that no matter what you were given, you almost could inevitably print it and not have an issue. And so you kind of didn't have to do maybe as much uh, uh, press checks by your customers or, or, and you also could, could be confident in meeting those SLAs. Can you talk a little bit about that too? Yeah, I think that it's um, it really is just an evolution of confidence, right? So you start using the tool and early on you feel like you need to check everything, right? Because you're just not sure what your output's going to be. Are you going to run into a new error that you didn't configure for on the front end? Um, we have pushed enough files through Ready PDF and the profile that Carrie has built today where we are very confident literally just turning it on. And uh, we don't feel the need anymore to actually check the output um, every single time a new, a new customer data file is sent through an existing workflow. Um, and so I think it's a confidence issue for us. And you know, early on, you're just a, you're a little nervous with uh, deploying a new tool and, and we're very confident in the solution today. Um, and I, I will say that it, uh, we are also, you know, not spending a ton of time trying to figure out what the issue is. And you know, early on, we would spend hours digging into a file that, that failed to try to really understand what the root cause is. Um, that's not as important to us today because we have a solution in place and we, 
we have just accepted the fact we're probably not going to fix the true upstream issue. Um, if we can just fix the file when it gets to RevSpring, then that is that really is the path of least resistance for us, and that is um, really the quickest path for us to get the document printed and out the door. So, Kerry, where in the process do you insert ready PDF? It, it, are you doing it when the file arrives or right before you print it? Yeah, so, um, you know, our customers have a secure FTP that they will um, send their file to us. And usually most of those customers are sending daily files. So Monday through Friday or Monday through Saturday, we're getting an upload. Um, and that upload of, you know, it's typically a zip file that contains, you know, anywhere from 70 to 2000 individual PDFs. So your record is a PDF and my record is a PDF and Eric's, Brian's, they're all separate PDFs. So the first thing we are doing is using the Rubica tool to um, merge and concatenate that into one um, continuous file and also tagging it to make sure that every start and end page is in there correctly. So once that has been merged, uh, it immediately goes into ready PDF and, um, and then it can move on down the workflow where we might have other documents, maybe um, an additional insert or a financial assistance policy, or maybe we are, you know, adding address cleansing, like, you know, a, a brand new address block in IMB or, you know, production barcodes that help us make sure that what we mean to go out the door is, is what goes out the door. So we have a lot of steps after Ready PDF, but we find with the customer provided PDFs, if we clean them up front, they should, they should work their way through our normal processes, just like any other file that we're creating internally. So Ryan, do you have any final questions for Eric and Carrie? Because th this has been really enlightening for me. No, I, I think probably the last question for Carrie is, uh, but you explained how it was used ready PDF in, in your normal workflow situation, but, and I think Eric touched on this too, but for, for maybe if it's a new program or a new customer and you run into some issues, you don't necessarily, it's almost like you can bring out a second instance of ready PDF that you use uh, from the design aspect and just test it right on the fly and see if it can fix it at that point without having to go through the normal workflow as well. Is that, is that, that's true. Yeah, uh, you know, we have new customers that are onboarding all the time and we will use ready PDF to kind of get a snapshot of what's going on in that file so that if there are, you know, upfront issues from day one, we're resolving those with the customer, um, you know, months ahead of the day that they want to go live and be mailing with us. Um, we have also seen on the back end that sometimes ready PDF can be used manually to clean up a job file that maybe contains some bad graphics, maybe a, a spot color slipped through and isn't printing correctly or something else slips through the process. Um, ready PDF is something that we can also use on the back end um, to that final combined imposed job that is going out to the machine um, as one last kind of cleanup step if we need it. Sounds like you guys have made a great investment in technology and just really reaped every last advantage out of it in ways that I hadn't heard other people really be talk about using it. So I want to thank you for sharing. Uh, I know everybody listening has, has learned quite a bit out of your adventures with Ready PDF and with Rubica as well. Um, I'm Pat McGrew from McGrew Group. This is Ryan McAbee for Pixel Doc Consulting. I want to thank Eric Collinsworth and Carrie Sillard from RevSpring once again for sharing. And we hope to see you on another one of our case study videos.